I got enough room on here. Stop the fucking stopping the shit. The phone's fine, okay? But I do have... <laughs> it gets me so fucking grumpy. Where are we going with this? What do you guys want to direct? What you want me to talk about? How about fuck you and we just don't load anymore? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get so exasperated. But I do love my uncle and stuff like that. What you guys want me to get to? Stop the stories and let's start... You want, you want, you want to be clinical. Okay, you fucking assholes. We'll be clinical then. Yeah, a lot of the things that I did, it wasn't out of humility. And I was out of self-preservation. Because I was good and other people would abuse me for being good. That's not humility, it's self-preservation. It's a survivalist instinct. It's also humility. You have to learn to be humble and not make other people feel bad about themselves. I went through cocky parts in, not junior high, yeah, junior high and a little bit in high school, not too much. I learned to curtail it because my dad checked me when I was out in the crowd. My dad sat there and said, hey, you know, because don't do this Muhammad Ali crap, okay? You do Joe, uh, Joe, uh, what was his name again? Joe Lewis, you know. Joe Lewis, I'll be there and I'll be on time. My dad was a cowboy. And you don't tell other people that you're good. Other people will tell you. You don't need to tell other people if you're good at something. They'll tell you. But in my society, when I was growing up, no. I, and that's what happened to me. Well, then when I went to Mayfield, I went there and I played and I did my best. And they all, you suck, you suck, you suck. That's all I ever heard from Francisco. That's all I ever heard from all the other guys. You suck, you suck. And I started to believe it. I'm like, Dad, I must suck. And he's like, not everybody's like you, kid. You know, and then I was always picking up guys like Scott Parr. You don't suck. They would always say that to Scott Parr. And I watched Scott, and Scott wasn't, he was one of the least talented when they would tell him he sucked. I was like, you don't suck. You get out, you contribute, and you help. And he thought I was, I don't need your help. I don't need you to make me feel good and all this stuff. So they were picking on the two new, uh, he was the regular pick on scapegoat white guy, and I was the new white guy. And they were, you know, you suck, you suck. And I knew I didn't, because half of them couldn't check me. <laughs> when they were playing, I was like, wait, they can't. I'm missing sometimes, or I'm doing this, but I was, no, I didn't suck, you know. The other guy who was cool with me was, of course, Gerald Williams, the big six foot six guy, Har Harley Pettis, yeah, all the black guys, <laughs> and Waylon Robinson, who was like one of the black guys. <laughs> Waylon was about two inches shorter than me, but he had these big thighs, and he could jump the fuck out of the gym. Yeah, he could, we could both grow up, we were the two highest jumpers on the team, uh, and we were, I was 5'10", and he was about 5'9" about an inch shorter than me yeah but we could both sit there and jump to see who's who could put their wrist or their arm or their hand up higher over the rim yeah he could jump but Waylon regular Robinson he played in the post he was 5'9 and they played him in the backup post position and he could guard uh Gerald and Franz but he didn't always front him sometimes he could post him up from behind because he had strong legs I thought I can't do like Waylon can but I can at least try to hold my own in the post where I can front and step around and do other things and use my footwork, my speed, my footwork. And if I have to guard him in the post, I will. You know. But you saw Nick Johnson trying to guard Frank Kaminsky in the post. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, it's hard. <laughs> but um, uh, it's very difficult. They set that up a couple of times. And Nick did fairly well. It's, it's a, Man, Caleb had trouble guarding Kaminsky in the post. He's good. Frank Kaminsky is a very good athlete. He's got great, excellent footwork. He doesn't need to elbow people to push them out of the way to get a shot off either, Bo Ryan, okay? Yeah. You stop coaching kids to get away with whatever they can get away with. If you're going to lose, you're going to lose. But at least you'll lose with integrity. I've watched Bob, Bobby Knight and all kinds of other coaches and stuff do that shit for years, and it pisses me off. Yeah, you'll do whatever you can to get away with. To get, yeah, I watch your kids. We're sitting there watching the ref while they're in there. You coach them. Stay in the paint as long as possible. Watch the ref. Make sure you don't get the calls. But, but, yeah, everything they do. I thought it was just the Hayes kid, but Decker does it too, and so does Kaminsky. Bring the elbow around, clear space, and move. Make the ref make the call. That's exactly how they coach them. Bet you five bucks. You ever said we're a fly on the wall in the Wisconsin Pride? Go ahead and do it. And if you can get away with it, keep doing it. Make the ref make the call. I bet you every player that ever, every Bo Ryan uh, player that's played at Wisconsin says that. Make the ref make the call. It's one of the main things he says through his practices. Don't stop your game. Make the ref make the call. Then we change our game plan from there. And then if it gets too bad, let me handle the refs. That's what Bobby Knight used to tell all his players too. <laughs> yeah. Just yep, let me handle it. Mm -hmm. Sean Miller says the same thing. They call pretty shitty calls on you when you stand there after Bo Ryan throws a fit, Hayes hits you in the ass with an elbow and you're not even near him and knocks you flying and you get called for the call. The ref made the call. Let me handle the ref. Your job is to play the game. My job is to be coached. That's what Sean Miller tells him. It's a totally different ballpark. <laughs> okay, two different stratospheres. 
Sean Miller, Bo Ryan. Bo Ryan's a great coach. He's a good coach. Sean Miller's a great coach. But he hasn't. He doesn't have a, a resume to. No, because he doesn't sit there and tell Aaron and Nick and and Caleb and all those guys make the ref, make the call. Because then when you do that kind of stuff like Mike Montgomery does, somebody ends up getting hurt on California, and Sean Miller feels like shit about it. Okay? Because the man has a conscience, his dad has a conscience, and so does his brother. They're not basketball coaches. They're gentlemen that coach basketball. All right? I want to make myself perfectly clear. This isn't sour grapes. This is dis discerning observation, analysis, and processing. So stop telling me how this shit works because there's options and Sean Miller doesn't take that option. He takes the more humble, righteous route like John Wooden. Okay? I am so sick of you brainiac motherfuckers telling me how the brain works and what we're doing. Some of us just have integrity and some of us just don't. It's evolution. Your evolution sucks. Tell me about it one more fucking time. Y'all, piss me the fuck off, okay? It's... You always need ego checks, okay? And I, I admit it. Sometimes when I'm dealing with the stuff here at Jennifer Lopez, she needs an ego check. She came and she checked my ego today a couple of times. We're going to go load these up because you can see how she checks my ego and how I check hers. And obviously, given our social dynamics, I need to check her ego more than she needs to check mine. I check my own ego, thank you very much. And I'm excellent at it. And then sometimes you think you're getting too full of yourself and you're too cocky. No, it's because I'm dealing with you. I am one of the least cocky human beings you've ever met in your life. Like Sergeant Montavo, she said, you know, Law was telling me something about my ego. Because your ego can't handle her going out to the club and all that. And she's going, what are you talking about, Parsons? You have no ego. You're like the most egoless men I've ever met. She goes, you, you don't let your ego run you. you. You care about people's feelings and you care about how it affects them. And it wasn't because, you know, I told you a lot of those things and stuff like that. I only needed a little brief check in second and third grade with little Shandy Robinson to know that I didn't want to see that face on anybody again. And I had to see it with my Emily Grace Parsons. Okay, and you've never met a cuter, sweeter girl. And when she sleeps, she has the most beautiful rosy cheeks, beautiful eyes and eyelashes and the curliest of hair. And she's one of the sweetest little girls you've ever met. She was having some, she has different kind of cognition things that have evolved through her family, but they are borderline genius. And she's, it's not borderline genius, she is a genius in a lot of ways. It's just hard for people to ascertain and understand her because of the complexities in which she sees things and her brother Noah too. And uh, it's more than borderline genius. There's no such thing as a borderline genius. You either have certain forms of uh, intellectual humble genius in you, or you're an arrogant prick who thinks you know something. That's so good. And Emily's not. She always would feel like she was dumb. Patrick's, and Noah's mom always used to say, he's special. And Patrick, Noah would think, I'm dumb because I have trouble reading and I have trouble doing this. Patrick, Noah, I give you quantum math proofs and stuff like that that people at fucking Princeton can't handle. And you understand it. You're not stupid. Your mom is. Okay. <laughs> God. Yeah, I didn't tell him that. But I was like, quit saying he's special and he's slow and he's stupid. He's not. You don't have to be able to read people's symbols, understand them, ascertain them, and use them to manipulate other people to be an intelligent human being. Okay? Jesus was perfuted to not be able to read and write at first. He had better intellectual skills than that. And the same as Muhammad, which is why he had help from Ali writing. Because he was so intellectually advanced. He had so much symbology and so much relative information coming out at once. He didn't have the computer aids, computer mechanisms, and the advanced teaching mechanisms and apparatus we had to indoctrinate him into language symbol sequences. He was more brilliant than you can ever conceive. Okay? Do you understand? Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah. No, you you're, you don't... When you connect to a mind like mine and how fast it works and the things that it's dealing with and the way it analyzes things and the way it can process things and correct you on certain kind of mistakes at a moment's notice, the moment you're exposed to it and he sees the relative connections to it, you realize you're dealing with a mind that is just beautifully well relatively connected and amazing because of its amazing faith and evolution through great love and understanding of our relative oneness like Judo and me. Yeah, you have, you've never, you don't connect to me as well as she does. So you don't have an idea of what she sees when she sees things through my eyes. Okay. You're not real. This is a computer program. This isn't really happening to me. No. 
Anybody in their right mind would fucking hate this. Guys are the biggest fucking line of assholes that ever put on a human body bag and walked around in it. What are you doing in that human suit? Not very much. Just sitting here putting up with the other fucking morons in their human suits that are complete fucking assholes and want to sell me on a movie like fucking Donnie Darko. I'm pissed. I'm sorry. Some of you keep on telling you just Lopez, Obama, Smith and all that. Some of your friends are complete fucking assholes. They don't even know they're making money off of this stuff. I don't think Susanna Vega or Tracy Chapman's a, 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 a evil person. I think the people that market them and sell them for their sensitivity are evil people, okay? Joni Mitchell's cool. The people that market and sell their bullshit to make money off of it suck, okay? If we were devoid of this irrational... The Lord's Prayer! Learn it, live it, love it, and stop being such fucking assholes! I'm sorry, Lopez. You're okay with this? You okay. Is your mom okay with it? No, I'm not trying to suck up to your mom. I just don't want to... I'm sorry, Relief Society, okay? Everybody who doesn't like the cussing, but... You guys, I love you. Stop being such fucking assholes. It's really pissing me the fuck off. I have no idea. <laughs> this is so fucking adolescently moronic. It is beneath us as human beings and our evolutionary state of being. You are not as highly evolved as you think you are, and it should be self freaking evident. I said freaking. I wanted to say fucking. Can I say it? Thank you. Self fucking evidence because evident because vengeance is mine so saith the Lord and thou dost fucketh me thou dost fucketh you do you understand me thou is fucking each other because all things are relatively connected infinitely eternally and relatively does thou understandeth the mathematical princess of vengeance is mine so saith the Lord you freaking free will retards sorry thanks lady she gets pissed <laughs> I like her I want to meet you someday. I really do. I don't care what people say. Tell Casper Smart I love him, but he's just going to have to let me, you, sit alone and just talk. Yeah, I don't stand a chance with the kid. He's younger, he's more attractive, and he's better in bed. We're friends. All right? That's it. Friends. But it's nice to talk to you. It's fun to talk to you. It's fun to connect to you. You get me, man. I like the fact that you get so pissed off about all this stuff, too. I Barack's the same way. He's like, you get to go and cuss them out and yell and scream and throw a fit and all that stuff. I have to sit and tolerate existence with some of these people when I want to rip their tongues out and tie them around their neck. He doesn't, you do mean that. I was going to say, he doesn't mean that literally. He just means it figuratively. You do mean it figuratively, literally. I, you can't help it. When they're so smug, they're so arrogant, and they're such fucking assholes, and they think their money market is getting, letting them get away with everything, and they'll keep making money off this bullshit, and they'll keep promoting it till the cows come fucking home, and they don't have to chase them across the endless skies on ghost rider horses. They're assholes. They're arrogant, pretentious pricks who think they're never going to. This has always been this way. It's always going to be this way, and it's never going to stop. And the markets are set up for us, and the surveillance is set up for us, and the science and technology is set up for us, and there's no way that chipping stuff will ever go and override and get rid of us because we're smarter and we rule the world and these people are beneath us and they're trolls and roaches and we're not. It sounds a lot like the Protocols of Zion and Adolf fucking Hitler, doesn't it? Yeah. It's nothing like Jesus. Nothing at all like Jesus. It, Neil, some of your friends are complete fucking assholes. They are so fucked up. They're influencing you and they're fucking you up. You are one of the most intelligent, loving, courageous, faithful, amazing human beings I've ever connected to. But your TV show stuff is pissing me off. Because it discredits a lot of beauty laid out by a lot of people that came before you that gave their lives to give you this perspective. Do you understand? If it wasn't for Jesus, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, Galileo, and the rest of those guys wouldn't even have shit to stand on without that example of standing for truth and for better than what these other people would put them through. Showing individual self-worth and unified relative life essence that needs to be respected, regarded, and appreciated. Y dude. All right? I'm going to go down the library and load these up. Thank you, Jennifer Lynn Lopez. I love you. I'm not making this stuff up. I don't know how this shit works with her. I only know how it works with me. I don't really can't tell you. Because she's never left a message for me. She's never talked. She, yeah, okay. I know you're in the Hotel California. I get it. I'm just going to have to get through and just have life sucking, and it's just going to have to suck till it stops sucking. That's all there is to it. When I suck, I can admit it. When they suck, I can't. Not saying she sucks. No, I'm saying the people she works for and has to. You too, Neil. I love you guys. I'm kicking their asses for you.
I love you guys. I'll continue to do so because I can't. We got to do it right because we can't do it wrong. That's why the whole world is singing that song. Jam on it. Jam on it. I'm there for you, Neil. I love you, dog. I love you too, Bree. I'm sorry I yelled at you so much, Bill Nye. I know you can't control. I know. Richard Dawkins, I, I love you too, Rick. I know. You guys all just work. Don't yell at us. You're rolling at the wrong person. Listen to Jay during the labor dispute in Sierra Vista. You're yelling at the wrong dogs. You're barking at the wrong dogs. The real dog is the bitch hiding behind the door. Okay. The little behind the closed door is little hiding, manipulating, anonymous piece of shit that points at everybody. It's the people on Wall Street who invented Wall Street, who controls Wall Street. It's them, it's them, it's them. Accuser. They sit and they hide and they make everybody else fight over scraps while they have the stockpile of the stuff. The life that I've always wanted, I guess I never have. I'll be working for somebody else until I'm in my grave. I'll be dreaming of a life of ease and mountains, oh mountains of things. They don't like a life of ease. They like drama. They like they're addictive. They're sociosistic psychopaths. They wake up with their dicks out and their hands ready to stick them in your ass in the morning. They're, they're energetic spazzes who like making life suck. Exercise, make money, get hot, put all this shit and everything like that. Yeah, Duke Mihal Rockefeller is just a symptom of the sign of the this and that and the whole Emperor Mihal Rockefeller thing. That's just a symptom of the sign. It goes even deeper than that. It's even more sadistic and self-indulgent than you ever thought. But for lucky for us, the computer systems seem to be able to make it to where I'm less harassed and can promote this and I get even more encouragement from local people that are wanting a better world and a better life. Maybe I'll keep hope. Maybe I will see you soon. I don't anticipate dating you, but I want to meet you. I think you're pretty. We already know that. That's been established. Most people think you're pretty. Yeah, shit. Harry and Keith keep you pretty. Half time, Harry can't keep his hands off you. Does his wife get mad? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um... I'd be able to keep my hands off you. I wouldn't want to offend you. I wouldn't want to. I've had too many women do that with me. I'll sit there and pat them on the head. Don't take. Okay, shit. I wasn't trying to. Okay. No, I wasn't going to grab your ass unless you let me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, I'm not that way. I've never been that way. I don't cop feels. And that's my wife that I'm copping feels all the time. <laughs> Sorry, it's fun. I don't such what. Is that my? That's my. It's not my ass, but you let me. You let me touch. I love you, baby girl. <laughs> you still have to kind of ask, and wives control it and act like that. So fine, you know. And no, I was never gonna get to the point where I went and screwed somebody else to get back at them. I'm not like them. I'm me. I'm evolved to the point where I'm humble, gracious, and I think about other people's feelings. And I don't think that having sex with me is God's gift, but I do know it's a privilege. All right, guys, I gotta go. I love you. Let's go load these up and we'll get flowing. I gotta come back and we'll start. We'll pick up where we left off tomorrow. All right? We'll just keep going. Um, this we got too much going and we're working too well. And uh, there's too much going on. It was fun connecting to Tyler and it was fun. He's a spaz. It was fun connecting to Oprah. She's a spaz. Jennifer's a spaz. Barack's a spaz. Don't let him fool you. He's a spaz. Ellen DeGeneres spaz. Spaz. Well, spaz. 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 They're all spazzes. That's why they're on Facebook, Twitter, and this, that, boom, getting this done. Insurance, get this done. Do you get the insurance so people make sure you're insured so you don't get sick or get killed? Or it's spaz, 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 spaz. We're spazzes. We relatively connect and we're all in a position that we're in for a reason because we spaz. Martin's a spaz too. Martin Yates is spaz. I'll, I'll call you cover. We're spaz, spaz, spaz. Tom Ingle, I love him. Spaz, we're spazzes. <laughs> we have adult ADHD like on uh, uh, the BOB on, uh, you know, the kids don't stand a chance. We don't do well with downtime and sit down and stuff we've got a world to save and people to stop killing other people so yeah, all the people that did bob marley demo that do a demo that do evil don't take a day off how can i and i tried to take a day off to bind to the system and do that and get what i got to do so they could all catch up and i just can't do it i'm too big of a spash it killed me inside it's killing me inside yeah it does and i get like fuck i can't do this i've got to get out there and be active and participate and help you'll do this or die trying we're all gonna die anyway so let's get out there and try our best that's what God made us for. Shut up, Lopez. Okay. I, no, it's not. It's not like that. I love her. It's just, you have any idea how much they've thrown at me, how much they've manipulated with this, and how frustrating it is? You have no idea how abusive, frustrating, and cruel my life has been. It's been horrible, what they've done to me to try to make me denounce God, to try to make me look irrational, to try to make me look like a demigod. Uh, cult leader and all that stuff. They've made my life hell. They knew I was going to get in a position to do this and they were trying everything they could to stop it and discredit the line of David and Jesus. So yeah, my life has been, it's it's been wor worse than you guys all think I, and worse than I thought. I never thought it was that bad. You know, I, mean, I thought it was horrible and stupid, but 
I never thought it was that terrible because I would look at other people starving and dying and kids and crack addicts and abused and people in the sex slave trade. And I'm like, your life isn't that bad. But mine was organized forms of discredit, trying to discredit me and abuse me. I made good decisions and I would make emotionally intelligent, faithful, lying, loving decisions, express what I was doing, tell the people verbatim what I was doing, how I was doing it, why I was doing it. And instead of getting, thank you, you're so cool, I got abused for it, treated like shit, and told what a mindless, dumb mook I was. Look at Faber and his wife. Oh, you're so stupid. Oh, I look stupid now, huh? Let's build a bomb and blow people up and threaten them if they don't accept our government. Oh, that Ronald Reagan's a fucking hero, and so are you. No. I could have told him that, but I never did, because I was too respectful, raised by my dad to be a respectful cowboy. And I don't tell people how fucking stupid they are when they're acting stupid, and they think I'm stupid and they're intelligent. Now that I do, I'm the biggest dick on the whole planet. I, Amy was, Stephanie was that way, and Amy was that way, too. He's the nicest guy, just can't hang out, but I can't tell him he has no backbone. And Stephanie used to do that to me all the time. I'm going to take all your money. I'm going to take you to court. Uh, and then when I went and got it stopped and didn't screw her over, but it stopped her from screwing me over, she would get all mad. You're such a jerk. It's like, well, let me get this straight. You gave me Patrick. I was paying you child support. I get the child support stopped. When you had full, uh, you had custody of him, you threatened to take him from me and threatened to abuse me with it and all this good stuff. If, I, if this wasn't coming in time, I took two weeks off to train. You weren't getting child support to me. Now I sit there and I get joint custody. You don't pay me anything. I don't pay you anything. And I don't threaten to take him and leave to New Mexico and tell you to go fuck yourself. And I'm an asshole and you're a great person. God, lady, you're sick. You're, when you've got me bent over and you're dramming and you're, you're, you're little wannabe dick in my ass without Vaseline, I'm the greatest guy in the world. But the moment I stand up and pull your dick out of my ass, I'm a creep? You're insane. Amy used to do the same thing. Fabre did the same thing. My family does the same thing. My dad doesn't. My dad has been my best uh, connection in my family to help me. So all you guys that have judged him, and he's had a rough life too. And I love him. Don't, don't say bad things about my father. I'll kick your ass. I love him. He's been through a rough life like all of you have, too. Get off Ralph Earl Parsons Sr. He's my dad, and he loves me, and I love him. And get off my family. It's hard to be my sister. It's hard to be my brother-in-law. And it's hard to be my spouse in this fucked-up, sadistic world run by people. Blame the people with the money that make you pay money to live here. And then tell them to stop, and then forgive them. Forgive them of the, de the debtor, and forgive your debt. Forgive the trespass, and forgive yourself for accepting the trespass. But don't take shots at people I love, and I love you all. So if you want to fix this world and help this kingdom start, you better learn to roll out with a big bucket of intelligent forgiveness. But don't tolerate abuse and kick the shit out of the abusers, and then when they stop, fix them, get them going right, and forgive them. Because if you keep beating their ass every day, like Ryan Hopp says about that thing, every time a guy tries to get them going, you keep reminding them of it. The thing is, is I'm not reminding you of it, you're not stopping. You have to stop first before... I have a chance to remind you of how fucked up you were. Now, I'll forgive you and I'll stop, but the, the fucking has to stop and the honesty has to start. I can't have an honest relationship with, and with someone who's still fucking the neighbor, okay? It's the whole, you know, she caught me in the shower, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Okay, if he's still fucking her, she can't forgive him. He has to stop fucking the girl next door before she can forgive him, take him back, and they can build a relationship that they can recover and rebuild. But if he's still fucking her, there's no love there, there's no forgiveness, and there's no trust. Do you understand that, Miss Lopez? Okay, thank you. You guys got that? All right, I love you guys, man. I'm going to roll down there. I know what the fuck I'm doing and all this stuff. This is so fucking simple, it's not even funny. You got it now? All right, I love you too, Mr. Cosmos. All right, man. I love you too. Love you too. Love you too. No, I love you. I'm serious. I really like you a lot, okay? Um, I, B likes you. I like you too, man. I like B. He's... He's been getting his ass kicked by me. He deserves it. It's okay. So does Jenny. So they all deserve it. They rolling it wrong. They deserve it. You doing it? Get your ass up on this. Get up out the street. Walk on the sidewalk. What the fuck? Use, wait till the light turns. Wait, wait, wait. Be careful. Look both ways when you cross the street. What's wrong with you? Just out there running around playing in traffic and shit. What's wrong with you? You're going to get yourself killed. Then you're going to upset me and I'm going to be sad. Here lies my dumbass boy who wouldn't look both ways when he crossed the street. You see what I'm talking about? I do the same thing. We all do it. You guys check me. I check you. Just so happens I'm better at checking you like Donna said today. You're just so good at it. I guess you got more experience at it. I am like Moses. Yeah, I've got more experience at it. But uh, I, you think I like it? I'm dad. But it's, I love it when my sons can sit there. We, My dad said, remember, we have children so we never stop learning. So let's all learn together. Let's all love together. Let's take a shower together. I, my dad wants to take a shower. i got to come back home and take a shower too. 
I'm in my dirties. I got to change before I go. I got to take a shower and go before. Yeah, you might want to get in your clean clothes and shower before you go in your dirties to the library. Load these up. That's a good point. I was distracted. I'm sorry. I do that. Yeah, I might need a really hot woman that's really nice to me around to help do that. Yeah, you, you, you got any friends? You, you know, I, you have a boyfriend. Could you like maybe like do like a um uh, the Rolling Stones? There's a couple, you know, ooh, I still I miss you. You got to know a couple of Puerto Rican girls that are just dying to meet me. That would be cool. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's not that I do this all the time. With her. Yeah, she's she has a boyfriend. She's a pain in my ass, guys. So I, I get to do this back to her. It's fun. I, yeah, I, I like this banter and being obnoxious with her. It, it makes me feel good. Well, she gets to have all this wonderful stuff and all this fame and all this nice stuff, and I get treated like I'm crazy and shit, and I put in all the work, she gets all the credit, and then I get fucked, so I get to take a few shots at her here and there. It's kind of fun, guys. What do you want me to do next? What do you want to make fun of? We'll talk about it tonight. We'll make fun of her some more tomorrow. You want to make fun of Barack, too? Who else? We'll, we'll, we'll decide. Okay, tonight in prayer, we'll find out who we're going to pick on tomorrow. It's fun to pick on Ricky, but not too much. He's had a lot of butt kicking. I like him, though. He's funny. He is a good guy. He just needs to stop helping sell cars. I agree. That's just stupid. You should read the book of Daniel. He should. That's a good babysitter. Sometimes the people of Bible can be a good babysitter, but not if you're a complete moron who tells everybody they're going to a magic sky cloud kingdom with the sky king, and that they'll go to a, a eternal furnace in the center of the earth with Saddam Hussein in some big pan with horns out of his head. Thanks, Ricky. <laughs> I, I connect to Ricky, too, guys. Okay, I love you. I gotta go. Blessings and peace. <laughs>